Hello, Petra. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. I know we're both very busy. Who isn't? But we're both very busy. And Petra, I really wanted to ask you to come here and chat to me today because this month when we're doing this recording is October 2023 and the focus is on World Menopause Awareness Month. And this year, the, the focus has become cardiovascular health. And I think this is so important. And I know we were talking about it and there's so much you can share about this as well. But Petra, before we begin, I'd like to actually just introduce you to everybody. And I wanted to reflect back on how we met because it's quite funny. We met for the very first time back in 2019 and it was actually at Dr. Louise Newson's very first menopause book launch. And we were at her clinic, Newson Health, and we were, you know, met each other in the room and you were talking about your passion around menopause yoga or menopause and perimenopause in general. And I was talking about my passion around food and why it can make a difference in that time. And we were just getting into this deep conversation. I know there was this really super healthy chocolate cake wandering around and, and we were both were eating it and trying to do some kind of video or photos with it and getting it into a right mess. It was actually hilarious. But please, could you tell everyone listening, Petra, about you, about what you do? I know all about you, but they don't. And it'd be lovely if you could tell us what you're doing right now as well. Well, thank you. Well, firstly, lovely to see you again, Emma. Uh, yes, we bonded over chocolate uh, dessert and a lot of giggling. And I knew this, this is a woman I want to hang out with more. So it's so wonderful that um, you've been part of my menopause teaching journey, Emma. And I'm extremely grateful for all your advice and guidance on nutrition for both myself, but also the women I support. So me, I'm Petra Coveney. I'm the creator of Menopause Yoga, which sounds a bit strange because, you know, yoga goes back hundreds of years, but it was originally quite a masculine practice. And um, when you look back at the uh, teachings, there wasn't anything there specifically around this time of a woman's life, which is really interesting in itself. Yeah. Um, so I created menopause yoga really as a result of my own experiences, my own difficulties with menopause symptoms. And I'd gone into my menopause earlier than my sister and my friends. So I had no one to ask. And sadly, my mother had passed away quite early in her life. So there I was. It was back in the day. My gosh, this is easily 20 years ago when it was like the medieval dark ages. Menopause was a taboo word. You didn't mention it, not even to your friends. You know, it was it was a word that would make people shrink, you know. Um, and uh, there was very little information out there at all. So when I went to my doctor back in those days, they refused to give you HRT mm. because of the misunderstood um, breast cancer health risks. And I said, well, what can I do? And they said, we don't know. <laughs> so I was like, OK, I'm actually a former BBC journalist. Um, I've got research skills. So I just dedicated uh, my time to researching whatever I could find out there about nutrition, herbal remedies, yoga, exercise, everything, HRT, and pulled it together into something I called menopause yoga and well-being so it was the first program menopause program of its kind um and it was a real struggle back in those days emma um and i know that you'll know this from your work around hormone nutrition um people didn't want to hear the word menopause so i would go to yoga studios and say can i run a menopause workshop and they'd go Shh, no um or i'd go to um uh, a doctor's surgery and say can I do some yoga practice in here for women going through the menopause and they'd say oh no that's that's not what we do and then of course you roll forward another 10 years and wonderfully Dr Louise Newson came on the scene and she practices yoga 
and uh, and listens to you about your nutritional advice and um, is an advocate of HRT for those who can use it. So that's how we both ended up being at her wonderful menopause uh, clinic when it was first opened. And that's where um, I launched the first menopause yoga teachers training course. So I'd already been teaching menopause yoga to women for 10 years. But then I had this opportunity to create a course to train other teachers all over the world. And this was really exciting because whenever I ran um, a workshop in, say, London in the UK, we would have women and yoga teachers flying in from all over the world. It was shocking. It was actually um, humbling because it showed you just how little information there was out there. So then I launched this course so that other teachers could support women where they live so that they didn't have to fly in hundreds or thousands of miles to do the workshops. So that's Brilliant. where we are. We launched the Menopause Yoga Teacher Training course at Newson Health in 2019. Um, and you have wonderfully supported me all along the way. Um, I love the fact we still refer to your chapter in the menopause yoga book that's got lots of advice for nutrition for different symptoms and overall health and well-being. And I'm also incredibly grateful that you've contributed webinar talks for the teachers training course. And guess what? We now have 600 trained qualified teachers in 50 countries. Oh, amazing. Amazing, Petra. That is phenomenal. Well done. I've, it's been an absolute passion and pleasure. But like you, Emma, you're passionate about nutrition and menopause. And I'm the same way through what I teach as well. Very much so. Very much so. Well, thank you for that, Petra. That is that is phenomenal. Congratulations, because I know there's a lot of hard work as well as passion that goes into that. Petra, we're going to talk today about a focus on cardiovascular health and heart health and things like that. And I wanted to query you or question you about how yoga can fit into that, how yoga can fit into cardiovascular health. And I know that there are certain areas in yoga that really strengthen this up. So can you go through that with us and just tell us? Okay, so first of all, your your heart, as your, your listeners and viewers will know, is a muscle. So we need to work that muscle. And it likes good stress. It likes to be challenged. It keeps it healthy and strong. So we can do some of the strengthening yoga poses where you, if you raise your arms up to shoulder height or higher, that means that your, your heart is working harder to pump the blood um, against gravity. So any of the yoga poses, that's right, that we practice like a warrior two or just even in our sun salutations, this, if we hold the poses for longer, is going to increase your heart rate. And that's a really wonderful way that people who are, let's say, less confident in doing aerobic exercise, maybe they don't want to go to a gym, maybe they're feeling a little bit shy to start with. It's a wonderful way to introduce them to exercise that's going to improve their heart rate um, without having to go to a, um, a hit class or a gym with very loud music and lots of other people. So you've got these wonderful poses you can practice in your living room. It's where I am now in my own home. Um, and you just hold them for maybe 30 seconds. If you get a little bit stronger, you could build it up to say 60 seconds, one minute, simple. Um, and then there are other things that you can do. There are some um, squatting type poses called chair pose. There's something also called a goddess squat, which is kind of empowering as well. We get into these physical positions and we can channel this kind of goddess energy and um, hold the poses. And this is also going to work the heart. And then we move up and down through the poses. Absolutely simple. If you want to challenge yourself, you can add um, a weight, um, like a physical weight to make it a little bit stronger, strengthening your other muscles too. So that's two things. You can do holding poses for a little bit longer. 
dynamic squat like poses in yoga, even adding weights. But then there's another way. And this is something which is really specific to yoga. Yoga is proven scientifically with clinical trials to reduce the heart rate in order to reduce stress. And remember, your heart does not live in isolation in your body. It's part of your whole physical nervous system, uh, the brain heart connection, everything. And so reducing stress will reduce the negative impact on the heart. So there's that positive stress of exercising it in a positive way through movement. And then there's reducing the negative nervous stress to improve your heart rate. And we know that this can then help to protect your heart against heart disease. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. I just, even actually your voice went into this kind of calm tone when you were talking about reducing stress around your heart. And I was going, oh, yeah, <laughs> that worked for me. I, uh, yeah. Let's face it, Emma, because we all live these really busy lives now. And the one thing that we all need is to reduce stress. And this is where we think one of the reasons why so many women, people are talking about their menopause symptoms is because the stress rates have gone through the roof in recent years. There's more anxiety, more overwhelm, all of those menopause symptoms getting exacerbated by the stressful lives that we lead. And what I love about menopause yoga is we can give just five minutes practice or 10 minutes if you've got time. And this can either boost the heart rate through exercise or reduce the heart rate to reduce stress. Simple. You don't need to go for a 90 minute class or anything like that, five or 10 minutes. And we can we can look at some of those in the minute. That's amazing. Actually, I would love you to demonstrate in a minute. I know that when I do go to a yoga class and I'm doing the type of class, you you probably could tell me the, what it's called, but the type of class where I'm holding those poses for longer. Um, so it's not so much a flow type class, which I think of as almost a bit faster, but where I'm holding these yoga poses, but it's longer. I know my heart rate increases because it's quite hard to hold my muscles, to hold the poses for longer. I mean, I actually absolutely love it, but it is tough. It's hard. So, yeah, that's yeah. That's what I love as well, though, is that while we're holding the poses and remember, you're in charge, you know, especially if you're doing a home practice, you could say today I'm going to hold the pose for five seconds, 10 seconds, 20, 30. And then you just build it up incrementally. And one of the other things that we do in yoga is help to build mental resilience. So rather than rushing from pose to pose or thing to another thing, we stay in a pose and we build resilience. And there's a there's a pose called a uh, warrior two, which is wonderful. It's like this kind of goddess warrior. And you, you know, you lengthen your arms and you're looking out to the middle finger of your front hand and focusing. And what we know is number one focusing in that way in a very specific place can concentrate the mind and you know when we're having these really stressful lives our mind is here 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 it's all over the place and that's actually the definition of stress we need to be able to focus so whilst you're doing the yoga practice you're also practicing mindfulness being present in this present moment and that calms your mind and that calms your nervous system whilst you're also working your heart. Isn't that oh, beautiful? Isn't that that's, beautiful? It is fabulous, absolutely. And it's certainly, I feel that on myself. Um, okay, that's wonderful. Petra, would you mind showing us a few of these things um, that you were just talking about? Some stuff that we could do at home, that'd be amazing, thanks. Absolutely, because that's the other thing about menopause yoga. I always say to my clients and the teachers I train, you know, menopause symptoms don't just happen on a Friday night in a yoga studio with a yoga teacher. You know, they happen anytime, any place, anywhere. And so we need to have techniques that we can practice at home. I even teach techniques that you can practice in the office or in the supermarket or a standing yeah. 
bus stop that nobody would even know you're practicing but you are so um yes i'm, I'm just going to come on to my mat and um hope that you can see me and still hear me let me know okay. if any issues okay yeah definitely will do thank you so one of the first things to say is look at me i'm a normal shaped human person in a human body I am not one of your Instagram, you know, athletic types. I stay healthy, I stay well, I stay flexible, but I am nearly 58 years old and I have to work at it like everybody. When I say work, I wake up in the morning and I do stretching for flexibility and mobility. Yep. And then I do some aerobic exercise. Maybe it could do um, the little practice I'm going to do now, or maybe it's a little fast walk with my dog. So working the heart by work, walking fast, or maybe I go for a swim. But what I just want to say is yoga is not exclusively for flexy, bendy types that you see on uh, social media. I am a normal person just like you. Thank and you I, for that. <laughs> I do have um, a yoga mat and it's always worth investing in some kind of exercise mat. Just because um, I've got carpet here, but if you had a hard wooden or tiled floor, it wouldn't feel very comfortable. So I'm going to start by showing you some dynamic movement. Remember, this only needs to take a couple of minutes, a little snack of exercise in your day. So we'll start without the weight. I've got my little carpet right here. So one of the poses in yoga is called chair pose, and it's like sitting into a chair. So imagine that I'm sitting into a chair and I'm gonna bend my knees and just check that I can see my toenails uh, in front of my knees. However, a lot of people when they do this position will find that they are putting too much pressure into the lower back or the knees and so that's not good for them. So actually you can turbocharge your practice and protect your lower back by using a block. If you don't have a yoga block, don't worry, you could get a cushion, a nice firm cushion, and just place it in between your legs like this, bring your feet a little bit closer, and then you've got something to squeeze and hold on to. So then I'm going to sit down as if going into a chair and reach my arms forward, squeeze the block more, I don't know if you can see, but just then, lifting up the belly button, that's engaging your core abdominal muscles and protecting your lower back. And I'm working my glutes, my thighs, <laughs> my bum. And then if you want to make it a little bit dynamic, it's your choice. You can sit down like this. And as you exhale, make a fist. Draw your elbows in towards your ribs and squeeze the block as you come up to standing. Squeeze your bum. This is going to add more muscle strengthening. So let's do that a few more times. We're just going to go inhale, reach, exhale, squeeze, inhale, reach, exhale, squeeze, inhale, reach, exhale, squeeze, inhale, reach, exhale, squeeze. And I, what I love about that movement, you kind of feel powerful and we want to feel strong. So I can already feel my heart rate going up. And my breath is getting deeper. That probably took about 30 seconds. So it, it doesn't have to be a big deal. And then if I take a weight, maybe we could do some squats. So I've got a pretty big purple weight here. We're going to step the feet wide and then turn the heels in so the toes are turned out. Bend your knees and just look down so you can see that the knees are going in the same direction as your second toe. We don't want the knees to drop inwards because that would hurt your knees. So we take the knees wide coming over your second toe. And if I turn to the side, you'll see that I'm not sticking my bum out. Sorry, Emma. <laughs> but I'm not turning it in either. It's just plonking itself down as I lean slightly forward straight spine then you push into your heels this is important because it actually activates your thigh muscles pushing into the heels lift up and then bend and lift and bend and lift and bend and lift and bend 
And Emma, if you feel like this is where it gets a little bit juicy, you can do some bounces. Ten, oh. eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> and do you know what that looks like, Emma? <laughs> Apart from raising your heart rate, what that also does is it gives you a boost of energy as the blood rushes back up to your head. So it's a great way to actually re-energize in the afternoon instead of drinking a cup of coffee. Amazing, amazing. Great tip there. Thank you. I've got another one for you. So this is where we come into our de-stressing. Now I have here, it's a little eye bag and you can place it on your forehead or your eyes. If you don't have one, ask a friend to buy you one for Christmas. It's got a little bit of weight in it. It's um, like beans or you know, like a sandbag. I've got a, a pillow, is any old pillow you've got in your home. That's just going to be for your head. And then I've got a blanket that I've folded up. So if I just show you, it's any old blanket. This one is just one I had on my sofa. And I can either fold it or roll it. So it becomes quite thin. Do you remember those paper fans we used to make as children? It's just folded like that. Then we place this onto the mat widthwise. And this blanket is going to go where your bra strap is at the back of your shoulder blades. Then we come to lie down and please note, if you're listening to this rather than watching, we want our arms and shoulders to be on the other side of the blanket and the head is resting on the pillow. So I'll just show you. So it's on the bra strap. The arms and the tips of the shoulders are on the other side of the blanket. I've got a pillow for head comfort. Some people don't like having a pillow so they can move it. And you can either have your knees bent with the knees dropping in on each other. That relaxes your lower back, your sacroiliac joints. Or you could allow your legs just to drop and relax out onto the mat. And then if you have that eye bag, remember, great Christmas present or a birthday present, you can place it on your forehead or your eyes. Now, the forehead has an acupressure point that is very calming. If there's a little bit of weight on your forehead, it has a calming effect on the nervous system. And already, Emma, I feel like I just want to lie down and rest. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, literally watching you is so peaceful and relaxing. Um, Petra, could you, is there a, an actual height that that blanket needs to be at? Is there any particular thickness you think is important? Not really. It comes down to what is most comfortable for you. Now, I'm quite flexible in my upper body. We call this the thoracic area of the spine. But other people might find that their posture is more rounded in the upper back, in which case they want the, the blanket to be folded less, and they definitely, definitely will need a pillow for their head. So it comes down to comfort. Um, you need to get into the pose, reposition, go, do I feel as if my heart is opening? That's what it's about. But I want to show you an alternative. If you don't like having the blanket widthwise, you can actually lengthen it along the mat. And this is a, another pose, it's called supported fish pose. And what happens is you then lay your spine onto the folded mat, sit at the very end of the blanket, Slowly lower yourself down. And then you might use the end of the blanket where your head is just to tuck a bit underneath your neck. And that might be enough. But if it's not, you can place a pillow underneath your head. So it's the same pose, but with the blanket along the spine rather than across the bra strap. And again, this can just feel oh, so relaxing. 
Ah, a gentle opening for the heart. Amazing. And then I would suggest that people set a timer on their phone or their clock uh, for maybe five minutes or 10 minutes if they have time and stay. All they need to do is stay and rest a while. Um, what I love about this as well is that you can practice that pose in the afternoon, again, when you're having that energy lull. And instead of reaching for the chocolate or the sugar or the carbs or the coffee, taking that to 10 minutes, you will put energy back into your battery. And when you come out of the pose, not only will you feel more energized, but you'll feel calmer, more focused, and more ready to practice whatever you need to do for the rest of your day. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, Petra. You, you, and that is so true. You're actually right. I often get people who have that massive afternoon flump as well. Uh, and they go and they reach for coffee or caffeine or chocolate or whatever it is at that point. But if they were able to dedicate five, 10 minutes to doing that, and I always say, make sure they have masses of vitamin C at lunchtime, but that's a different matter entirely. That would also give them energy in the afternoon. But that's it. And that would completely re-energize them and in such a relaxing way. I mean, oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. I also mentioned something else, though, because we're, we've been talking about the heart as an organ and we're needing to strengthen it and uh, reduce stress and feed it good food, feed the body good food. But there's also the interaction of your mind and your thoughts. And can I share something that I think is really beautiful, Emma? And again, this is something that in menopause yoga, we combine Western medical science, including nutritional science, but bring in, we, we blend it with Eastern well-being. And one of the things I love about traditional Chinese medicine is that they reframe, they redescribe your postmenopause, not as an end of reproductivity, a kind of negative thing. They describe it as second spring. Do you like that? I love that. Absolutely love that. And so youth or teenager, the teenager, that's when you're in your spring, you're flourishing, you're growing. Summer is like your womanhood where you're active and doing. Uh, autumn is like the leaves falling from the trees gently, you know, as the hormones start to bleed. Winter is your menopause, a time of deep rest as you step through that transition. But then it's like you're stepping into another new place and it is your second spring. And oh. if, yeah. And if you've looked after your nutrition, if you've looked after your health and well-being, then when you come into your second spring, what can happen is that you have this energy or sap rising, which is then going to help you blossom and you become more creative. So in traditional Chinese medicine, um, if anyone's listening, I'm just going to stand up and show you. So I'm just showing Emma that in traditional Chinese medicine, this lower part of the belly that we associate with reproductivity, when you are no longer menstruating, then the energy that used to go into the monthly menstrual bleed, instead, that energy circles back up to your heart. And what happens is it starts to bring energy to the heart space, which in traditional Chinese medicine is associated with creativity and compassion. Oh. And, so, yes. and so what we want to cultivate at this stage of life is not just heart health with the heart as an organ. It's heart health, helping it to open up, re-blossom. And I have noticed, Emma, over nearly 15 years of teaching menopause yoga, that when women come to this stage of life, they start to get creative. They will have this surge of 
passion like you and me, like Dr. Louise Newson and Dr. Sarah Ball, this passion to create something new, this passion to support other people. But you might also find that people have a passion to go and start painting or drawing or singing or dancing or traveling or writing. And it's been absolutely wonderful to see this surge of creativity coming up. Have you have you noticed that at all? Oh, most definitely. I have definitely in myself. And I know you have in yourself, but I've noticed it in my clients, in my friends, though that not everyone, but some but so many people just find that they have this passion now in a different area and a creative passion. Oh, gosh, yes. Some of the best art, I think, comes out of a woman who has gone through this, actually. It's brilliant. So it's a wonderful perspective. And many of the people that I've taught have sent me emails or messages afterwards, and they've said, oh, we love the course that you did or the workshop. And you talked about this creativity in your second spring. And they said, guess what I've done? And I'm going to just give you a couple of examples, Emma, because I think they're so inspiring. Uh, one woman who had been feeling very depressed and low in her postmenopause, she remembered that when she was a teenager, she used to love riding horses. But as an adult, she felt she didn't have the money, the resources, the time for this. But now her children had left home. She got a group of friends together and they all chipped in and they now rent a horse at a stables, which they go and visit every weekend. And they groom and they ride the horse. Yeah. And she sent me this beautiful image of her riding on the back of the horse in her late 50s. And she said, I feel so free again. I feel like me again. Oh. Wow, it gives oh. me tingles. Um, and another woman, <laughs> and another woman um, she and her husband were struggling a little bit with their marriage. This is very common in your 50s, in the menopause. And um, one of the things they used to do when they were younger in their 20s, in their early days of romance, was they traveled around India. Um, and they both liked riding motorbikes. So yes, guess what? I got a photograph of her in full leather, sexy outfit, leather trousers, leather jacket, um, on the back of a Harley Davidson in India, traveling with her husband. Oh. And, it, and they, they helped bring their relationship back together again as well. And, um, oh, there are so many ones, but there's a woman I know who brought out a book of poetry and she's in her 60s now. There's um, a woman who started to um, paint and she's producing the most astonishing artworks that are so vibrant and positive. Um, so those are just a few little examples of how we can not only look after our heart health, but we can cultivate that heart creativity so that we can re-blossom, bloom in our second spring. Oh, amazing, Petra, what a fabulous way to finish our chat. Oh gosh, thank you so much to do with the heart focus today on many levels. Thank you, that, that was superb, wonderful. And I hope everybody listening gets that energy from you that you're sharing. It's wonderful, thank you so much, Petra amazing and if anybody yes if anybody wants to um get in touch with you i'll put details in the notes that go with this video and so they can get in touch with you because i know you teach the general public as well as you have programs of course for yoga teachers thank you emma and thank you everyone take care take heart <laughs> thank you bye-bye thank you petra